I was really interested to hear Steve Young's opinion on the San Francisco 49ers game coming up against the Kansas City Chiefs because obviously on this channel or if you're a 49er fan in general, the Chiefs have been the thorn in the side of the San Francisco 49ers that have stopped them and prevented them from having two Super Bowl rings right now. So when you bring up the Chiefs around these parts, that's a team that... It doesn't make you feel good when you hear that name. It's not like the Dallas Cowboys where we're like, oh, we like we like playing against Dallas. The Chiefs have been the team that has been the in the wall from us getting in front of getting to our ultimate goal. So I wanted to know what Steve Young's thoughts were on what this game means to this team. And I, I think they have a great conversation about it. And I think when they discuss it and also when he talks about Brock Purdy in his game that he was able to show against Seattle and, and still what, what Steve wants to see more of from Brock, I, I think we get, a, we get a good picture of, of what this game means and, and how they got to win it. So take a listen to Steve Young as he joins KMBR and Tolbert and Copes every week on Wednesday. Take a listen right here. I mean, the 49ers have, have made the offense their calling card. The defense, I feel like, for the Niners now doesn't really have a calling card. I would sort of say the same about the Chiefs' offense. Yeah, they're scraping around. And you guys were talking about it a minute ago about just Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid and innovation every week, figuring out ways, again, not science, art, right? Like yep. just figuring out ways to get the ball, put in the end zone, hang around, and then if you're close, there's that – confidence that comes from Patrick that no matter what's going on, if we're close, watch out. And so that's the thing that people have to avoid with the Chiefs. You've got to put them away early and then keep them away. Because if he's within 10, even 14, in, in, in the middle of the first, fourth quarter, it's game on. And he knows it, and, and, and we know it. And so in that way, you certainly don't want to be behind. But uh, I, you guys talked about in the Super Bowl, just you know, keep them to three, and we didn't have the lead to really put them away and then to hold them to 19 and not get it done. That's where uh, the Chiefs this year, their offensive identity is Patrick Mahomes scraping around. And you think about the, the league today, how many times I talk about this, it is a quarterback over. Look, it's always been a quarterback-driven league. I get that, but even more so today. And the kings of quarterback, and he's the king, they are the difference makers. They're the fourth quarter NBA, let's you know throw it around right at the end, uh, tight ball game, I can make it happen, and he's the king of it. And, uh, and that's why they're so tough to beat. And so this season, the Chiefs, like last year, they muddled around for a while. I remember even up till Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. we're like, forget about the Chiefs, man. <laughs> they're just wandering <laughs> through space. Like, they're like, uh, you know, <laughs> they're going nowhere. The camp of Israel just wander, run, running around like crazy. <laughs> but I think um, – but you know that if they – and the, the NFL is built this way, by the way. We saw us play great football mid-season last year, really kind of just battering people. But as the season ended, we started to get battered. We changed our nature. So the season has to – you want to kind of – in today's NFL, uh, you want to move into December. You want to play your best ball. You know how that works in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You don't want to waste it all in mid-season. But, again, you don't want to wait for it. But the Chiefs have a way – of kind of riding the ship, figuring it out, and getting better and better as they go along. And this season, they should have lost some games that they didn't. So they've actually got a leg up to their kind of middling nature in the in the season, and and they're in better they're better off than they should be in many ways. It's interesting that you talk about being in the red zone, uh, maybe even more specifically, like inside the ten, and how to get it in, in the end zone. That it's art. They seem to have misplaced their paintbrushes as well because that they do the same thing the Niners do. They just don't get there quite as much as the Niners, but both of them are probably bottom 10 in the league in red zone t touchdown percentages, which is interesting. And I wonder if it might be just as simple as that. Uh, now, we know it's never as simple, but as simple as, hey, whoever gets to the red zone and actually gets a few touchdowns, it's going to be the one that wins this game, period. 100%. And then most of the time, it's the art, not the play that's called in the huddle. And that's why I really encourage inside the 10, you just said it, Tom, I'd love to see some RPOs. I'd love to see Brock call to carry the football out of the huddle. I would like the, the threat yeah. of the 11th player, the quarterback, in today's game is the thing. 
and Brock's now shown capability of being able to kind of get out and do those kind. Let's come up with some plays like uh, Kyler Murray ran on us a, a, a couple weeks ago. Like, let's come up with stuff that, that Lamar Jackson's running. I know that doesn't make sense. Why, why would Brock Purdy be running stuff like Lamar Jackson? You don't run it necessarily as fast or as, you know, <laughs> yeah. quick, but you still can do it and threaten defenses in that final 10 yards where it's all compact and tight. You want the threat to come out of the huddle that I'm the 11th guy, watch out for me. Because that's what teams are doing today in the NFL. That's how they're getting it in the end zone. A lot of times, especially at the end of ball games, to go win it. And that's why I want us to, and look, we got the innovation to figure it out. And, and Brock would love that. Brock would eat it up. You think I'm not fast enough? You think I'm not strong enough? You think I'm not big enough? Like, screw you, bro. I'm going to go run this. <laughs> and I think those kind of plays, as we work into the season, especially this week, but especially as we get into the playoffs, that will be a differentiation for us in an ability to kind of beat teams in the playoffs, those big, because we're gonna we're gonna face it on the other side. You're gonna face Jordan Love. You're gonna face, you know, the Super Bowl. We're gonna we're definitely no question about it. In the AFC, gonna face Patrick Mahomes. I mean, Joe Burrow at some point, maybe. I mean, they, they might end up 13 and four. You don't know. Uh, 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 Josh Allen, CJ. You know, they got a lot of guys, and we're getting more and more in the NFC now, uh, which is scary. I don't want to see Jordan Love get better and better. I don't want to see, um, you know, Caleb Williams like what what what. what? Like, where does this juggernaut end up? I mean, I, none of us think that it's kind of threatening in the playoffs, but those are the kind of guys that can get it done in today's NFL. Chiefs take on the Niners. Uh, I use the desper- my desperation theory, and I don't know the nin- Niners aren't desperate, but I say they, they need to win. The Chiefs want to win, and sometimes that can come into play in a game. But talk about where the where the need factor is, you think, for the Niners. Because I don't think it's need to beat the Chiefs. I think it's need to get to 4-3 and three and start getting some separation from 500. I agree with that. There's no question that we've been middling around, and that's not who we are. I appreciated last Thursday's efforts. I thought mm-hmm. the Seahawks did not show up the way that I thought they were. I, I mean, I'd over... I'd over uh, rotated for them a little bit. I they mm-hmm. they didn't have the pressure defensively. Um, they didn't present a lot of stress that I thought they would present. But we played well. I loved it. Red zone score, do the stuff that we talked about, finish it up, uh, do it in front of the whole country. That kind of thing is really cool. And so that's the statements. I, I don't know that it's gonna. I don't know what's gonna win the West. I mean, is ten and seven gonna win the West? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and so in that way, um, we just got to play better. Like. I know we, you know, we got to win. Last week we had to win. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know that we have to, but we got to play well. And the, and the most important thing again, is, off, defensive line, offensive line, and then fourth quarter, right? Red zone, fourth quarter, put the ball in the end zone. Use the art. Forget about the. If we run, the, if we do it, the science of uh, football will kick field goals. If we do the art of football. We're going to score touchdowns. And so those are the big pieces that you have to do. And then you want to do it in front of the whole country. Everyone's going to be watching. What's going to happen in the Super Bowl matchup? And this is what's so painful about going to the Super Bowl and losing is that it takes forever to get there. It takes so many things to go right to finally get there. And then 60 minutes, and then it's down to one minute or one play to get back. And so this game, you can't get back to the Super Bowl this weekend. Can't do it. So, but can you send messages? Can you uh, further investigate defensive strategies from Spags? Can you, like, there's stuff to get done. No question about it. But you can't, that's what's so hard, is that you can't get back to the Super Bowl by beating the Chiefs this weekend. Although it is vital to your point, what you yeah. just said. I find it interesting because football is so different than basketball and baseball where you play a team multiple times throughout the year. You will play a team once unless you meet them in the playoffs. So for those that think this is a revenge game or you exercise your demons in this game, you would know, but I've never thought that you could exercise any demons until you get to the postseason. Like it'd be nice to beat them because you're beating a good team and you feel good about yourself. But as far as exercising demons, uh, you can't exercise postseason demons in the regular season, or can you? Well, the three the, the three years we played the Cowboys in the championship game, 92, 93, 94, we played them in the regular season every year. And I think we won two of the three. I can't remember exactly. But I remember winning those games and recognizing that that was good. That was cool. But it really, again, does not uh, exact any revenge. It doesn't. Yeah. It might heal a little bit from the pain. I think we're all in pain from last year, just the nature of how it went down. Again, 
Uh, and I think that helps, and especially at home. It might be cathartic for folks mm-hmm. and for the team in some ways. So that's all positive. It's just let's not – it doesn't fix it. What fixes it is, like you said, the playoffs, Super Bowls, that's where things you know get righted, and that's what's so frustrating again because it's a couple minutes here or there. You got to take a whole year of all the pain and anguish of getting back there, and um, and this is a, this weekend's a reminder of it. And so in that way, uh, here they are. They come out of our, on our field. Uh, the, the Chiefs who have kind of done this to us twice. Uh, let's let's make sure we send a message uh, into the playoffs. Right. This yeah. is where we can send say so. Hey, look, we can't. We can only speak so loud in October. Uh, but we'll speak as loud as we can. So again, about the conversation about what this team, what this game means because of this team, I 100% agree. I don't think that winning this game necessarily fixes two Super Bowl losses. And I, I don't think we've said that or even mentioned that on when we discussed this matchup and why I do think it means a little bit more to win this one. However, Steve Young did say that it might be cathartic. And I think that is the key key phrase here. And when you talk about this game of football, it's so mentally driven. Uh, yeah, we, we talk about height, weight, speed all the time and the physical attributes that contribute to football. But we know that this is a mental game. It's a it's chess. It's it's 40 chess out there, literally. And so when it comes to having a game that is so mentally driven, confidence is a huge element of that, right? Confidence in your ability to overcome and beat your opponent. And the 49ers are 0-4 under Kyle Shanahan. You, you've heard players talk about it all week. Trent Williams, you've heard uh, from Fred Warner. They they understand that like they haven't been able to get past this team. And so is this win going to somehow magically, uh, you know, change the out no it's not the the point of winning this team this game for this team is to prove to yourself that you can do it to just get over that mental hurdle of beating the chiefs and patrick mahomes because you never know when that that little boost will come in handy whether that's in this potentially the super bowl again if the 49ers face the chiefs so you never know and i, I really do think there is some power to that to be able to just kind of cleanse your soul of being 0-4 versus Chiefs. You got to get one. And um, I think this is where you start. And again, it's not going to fix anything, but it is going to, I think, be cathartic, just like Steve Young said. And when he's talking about Brock, he still wants Brock to run. <laughs> I, love, I, I don't expect anything less from Steve as a running quarterback himself, but he wants to see more designed runs. Now, obviously, with what we've seen from Brock, He's doing he's running outside of structure. It's it's less designed runs. I mean, we got a little bit. Remember that kind of pop pass on third down where it was like it was a play action kind of designed RPO kind of zone read. It was an interesting play. It was like a it was like a power left zone read run up the right pop pass. Like I I think Steve Young wants to see. Brock Purdy with the ball in his hands and more designed elements. And I get what he's saying. He wants to see defenses treat Brock like 11 on 11 football. And I think that might be in relation to, you know, you've seen teams drop a ton of coverage. You're seeing them only rush three. And that might be a sign of like, we're not scared of you in the pocket and escaping the pocket. So maybe what Kyle can do is he can dial up a little bit more uh, designed runs with, Brock as uh, a potential thing to do but he also talked about the red zone and I do like what he said about the red zone he said if we're going to we're going to play football like science or compare it to science in the red zone you're going to kick field goals if you're going to play in the end zone like it's art you're going to score touchdowns basically I think what he's saying is if you do it by the book and, and as if it's a revolving equation in the sense that you just do the same thing over and over again, there might be a situation where you find yourself in a bad spot. Whereas art is interpretive. Art is a situation where you, you freelance, you, you, you kind of go where your pen takes you in some instances. Like, I, I think that's what he's saying is he's saying more freedom uh, to create. Because when he's talking about Patrick Mahomes and he's talking about all these other quarterbacks and when he talks about how, 
you know, playing Patrick Mahomes is he's a guy who's going to just freelance. He's going to, you know, the play's not working out. He's going to scramble around. He's going to create a, an insane throw that completely changes the momentum or he's going to get the first down with his legs. So I really think that's what Steve's talking about when it comes to being more effective in the red zone, art versus science, just being less rigid in the in the red zone and more free flowing, which again kind of I think goes against what Kyle stands for. Kyle's a more rigid guy in in regards to how his scheme is operated. Uh, so if he becomes more free flowing and more free form and allowing Brock to take more ownership. It would be an interesting element. And again, everyone's evolving here. Brock's getting better. Obviously, Kyle and his play calling has to evolve with Brock and his skill set. So they're evolving together. The offense is still evolving, and they're learning how to perform without Christian McCaffrey. And honestly, it's probably a good thing. It's probably a good thing so that when you get Christian McCaffrey back in there, now you really have the freedom to make plays. So I love listening to you know Steve Young talk about all this stuff. Let me know what you guys think about it. I'll, I'll link the full interview in the description. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more.